again with another GTR video. And uh, the other issues I've been having with this GTR lately is the four wheel drive and the active LSD lights. Um, so as you can see here, we're gonna be doing the diagnostic here. So um, let's go ahead and get that started. Now, one thing we're gonna do uh, is drive the car at 30 kilometers an hour for a minute. And then we're gonna go ahead and run the diagnostic. So um, go ahead and get this started here. So just bear with me. And then once we uh, drive it for a minute, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just pull over and start the diagnostic process. Now, the first time I tried this, I didn't realize that if there was multiple diagnostics that you had to, you know, keep recording the whole time. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do it this time and then we're gonna go ahead and show you the whole process of what I'm talking about, so. Diagnostic. All right, turn the car off. Go ahead and pop out here. Our little safety pin. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this up. Now you wanna do the bottom pin and the top pin number four. So that's the ones that we're gonna use right now. And of course it wants to fall out this time. So as you can see here, and now we're gonna go ahead and turn on the car and start the diagnostic. So you turn it into the ignition stage. ABS light comes off and it's gonna come back on in blank. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take this out here now. Just pull these little pins. And we're gonna go ahead and start her back up, take her home. And like I was saying before, um, the weird thing is if I uh, turn this car on now, as you can see my hand, I turn the car on, all wheel drive light is on. Um, but if I turn it off, turn it back on real quick, it does, you know, go off for a second, so. And then it doesn't come back on. Now you wanna check with your model if it's a regular GTR or if it's a V-Spec, they are different codes, so check your service manual. Ours was the 7.4 and 7.6, which is the actuator motor or the pressure switch. So we went ahead and bought a replacement um, pump and go ahead and go install it. All right guys, so we are taking off the carbon rear diffuser on the V-Spec. Now, if you guys are looking underneath here, you're gonna see a couple bolts. You got two right here, and then you have one underneath right where my finger is. So there's one more right here. And that goes to this little black bar right here. So we're gonna go ahead and get these bolts off. And then once we get that off, there's a couple more. So you got two where a sub one is. Then you have two more over here in the back middle right here. You got one right here and one right here. You got two more right here. One, that's it. two, and then the same three on this side. So that's already kind of hanging down. But um, as you can see, it's kind of already hanging. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this off over here on this side and uh, drop the rear diffuser so we can jack up the rear. All right guys, so now that we got the uh, all the bolts out, we're gonna go ahead and start taking out the diffuser. This is all carbon fiber. Keep it from scratching the ground. Yeah. So, and as you can see, the air comes in right up underneath and keeps all this down for us. So there's the part number. If you guys are interested. Pretty expensive part, so you really, 
want to buy one if you don't have a V spec and let's go and put it over here on the ground. Uh, so right now we are taking off the rear cover. Uh, it's a plastic cover that's right underneath the driver's side quarter panel. Um, and this is going to be giving us access to that Atessa pump. So those two bolts are a 10 millimeter and the rest were just screws. Now we have full access to the first screw and uh, system. So we're gonna 24 have- millimeter. Yep. You see that right there? We're gonna have to take that off, 24 millimeter, and that's gonna let out a bunch of fluid. Not as much fluid as I thought. Probably all still in the diff, but that's fine. Cool. Should be easy swap. Easy swap. All right. All right, guys. So we got the second. Let's take this fucking plastic bolt. This one's coming out. All right. So she's draining. Go ahead and let this drain, and then uh, once it's done, check back on it. Just let it drain. Bro, you're making a mess. You swap it, bitch! You swap it! Don't spill it. Don't spill the top on your left hand. Guys, so we got the new pump and the old one. So there was three bolts. One, two, and three. This bolt uh, is actually right back here. Right here. So that's the second bolt right there. So this one's actually just uh, one of those ones that doesn't need to come all the way off, just needs to come halfway, because it slides in. And then uh, yeah, we got some fluid still dripping here. Move it, Mike, it's dripping onto the old pump. Oh, and then uh, you can go ahead and reattach the new pump and fill her up with fluid. Now the fluid is in the trunk. All right, guys, so we just got the new pump in. Sud one is fixing up the uh, you know, the clamp right there, but uh, we got the new one in. So awesome, pretty pretty simple. We gotta put a bolt in this little bracket right here so it stays. But other than that, everything looks good so far. The one thing that we did notice that we just fucking didn't notice is this is a different clip right here. Motherfucker. What do you mean? It's a different clip for this. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Okay. Hey guys, so we got some good news and bad news. As you can see, both pumps, uh, this one's a little taken apart and there's a reason why. So um, as you can see here, this piece on the Atessa pump supposedly is from a late model, right? This and is one and this is two. Yeah, so on the one that came off of our car, this is the two. So we literally just swapped this whole piece because it has, it has an extra wire. And then we noticed the plug, so this plug's the same for the actuator motor, but for this one, when the one they sent us was some like janked, cut up, rewired, some spliced in, I don't even know what connector this it is to. It six plugs on the new it one. It only had six plugs. So because of this extra piece, it wasn't there on ours. So we, we had to literally swap take this plug this piece off of this one swap over that unit and rewire everything. So we are literally almost done. We got one wire left 
and uh, hope it works. Hopefully it works. Yep. So, all right, guys. So now <laughs> we're officially back. Uh, we have our wires here. We probably should have put some, you know, extra electrical tape around it or something. But you know, this is exposed to the elements all the time, so I don't know. We'll figure it out later. Uh, we got the plug back on. We got this plug back on, and the only thing we have to really do left is plug this one back on right here, and this one down here. So once we get those on, we should be all ready to go. I know, I'm struggling, bro. You can see the not straightness on your line. Well, that's the tension. I know. You're gonna have to untension the tension. Will he get it next time on Dragon Ball Z? He got it! Let's go. All right, one down. Now we're gonna have to do the bottom one. Hands are slipping in the fucking oil. All right, cool. So we'll tighten that down, but we're gonna have to go underneath and get the bottom one now. Someone's got the washer. It's going in and going up. First try. Nice. Crank those down and yep. get the gun. Alright guys, so I'm not sure if you're supposed to use a special torque, but you know, torque that down. Alright, I think we should be all set. That's good. Alright, now we're gonna go down and do the bottom. Seems good, I guess. Yeah. Or right. one more. So today we have the Atessa just got replaced in the R34 GTR, and I'm gonna show you a couple things. So this is the old one over here. Um, this one was a little, you know, janked up and uh, wasn't working. I was throwing some codes, so we weren't getting all-wheel drive. So if you notice your all-wheel drive light on on the dash and you're having some issues uh, you're gonna need some fluids this is the reservoir you want to fill it just above that full line now I can turn on my light so let me turn that all on. right there we go so we got you know a better view so we filled it right above so it's the Castrol Castrol Transmax Z um, is a good equivalent for the viscosity you usually want to use uh, power steering fluid special from Nissan I'll throw a link to the part number in the description and post the image right here. So um, what we did first is we went up underneath and we grabbed the right here, this little bolt nipple, and we drained it from gravity. So it just literally came out. Um, so once that comes out there, we're gonna go up under the trans and into this little, see that little black cap there? We're gonna bleed that. And in order to bleed it, you have to loosen it and um, tighten it while it's pumping the Atessa system. Now, your Atessa system only pumps once, usually when you turn the car accessory mode on. Now, in order to get it to pump, on the R34 GTR, you're gonna locate up under the dash, your little plug right here. Pull that, pop that out right here. And then you'll see this white little connector right there. So as you can see this white connector, and then what you're gonna do is every second, pop it out, put it back in, while someone underneath is releasing it and opening it and closing it. So. 
Um, we're gonna go ahead and do this here and catch back here in just a moment. All right, guys, here are some instructions that I'm gonna give you uh, in order to see if you can get this done. Now, um, as you can see, I'm gonna link all of these in the description. Um, right now, if you see step five, I didn't really need to do this. I didn't find it very effective, um, but step six, um, you know, following all these video instructions, you'll see once I'm done bleeding the air, I'm gonna keep uh, disconnecting and reconnecting the, the line there so the fluid can go down. You ready? Yep. Okay. One second burps, remember? Oh yeah. All right, I think I need to fill it back up. Plug it back in? Yep. Go check the level. How much came out? What? Oh shit, are you stuck? Yeah. No, we're good. Plug it back in? Plug it back in? Yeah. Alright, take it out. Alright, back in. Because you're right in the middle there. Alright, take it out. Is it right in the middle? No. A little bit above. Back in. It filled back up again. But how much? Double the what it was above. So but, let me take it out. And yep. Some more out. Let me take it out. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure exactly um, what needed to be done in this situation. This is step seven of the that guide I showed you. Um, what we ended up doing is did this a couple times, and then we uh, ended up draining out a little bit more fluid from underneath on that nipple. Otherwise, um, you know, once you get it to that, that great stopping point, you should be all set. And we had no issues afterwards, so this kind of resolved our, uh, our issue. But um, looks like whatever we did uh, worked fine, and hopefully uh, works for you. Take it out again. Since doing not doing anything, is that in right now? No, it's out. Out. Okay. Just let let it out for right now. Keep it out. Yeah, just for right now. Yeah. I hear it pumping. Do you? Well, I don't know if it's that or if it's hands again. I hear something. Plug it back in. Yeah, just it filled it back up. I might just have to drain it a little more. Well, you want it in or out? Out the drain, right? Yeah, take it out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go underneath and release it again. All right, guys, just wanted to thank you guys for tuning in and watching this video. If you guys noticed anything that's different or wrong or you know, better suggestion, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that like button and subscribe. It definitely helps out the channel. And uh, stay tuned for some more GTR content.